Welcome everyone to my very first Monster Hunter World Guide. For those who waited patiently, I salute you. I'm sorry if it took this long to create my first guide for this game, since honestly, I'm a complete noob when it comes to monster hunting. I got to learn the basics first, and grind the necessary stuff to give you a detailed guide. You all know that I like mean maxing builds, and I just can't stand something incomplete. Okay, enough with the rant, and let's get into the real video. The moment I step into the Monster Hunter world, I fell in love with dual blades. I'm a player who loves fast paced action and, it's a no brainer for me that I would choose to try out this weapon type first. Even though this weapon doesn't deal massive damage output per hit like the great sword, still, I love that flurry of slashes and the ability to move fluidly. Demon mode was one of the selling point for me. It just makes using dual blades so good. The combination of fast dodging and insane slash combos makes it very entertaining. When we take consider how many hits per combo dual blades make, we can see that this is the top in terms of dealing damage per second to all monsters in the game. But like any other weapons, dual blades have their flaws. The most notable ones are the stamina drain in demon mode, fast sharpness deterioration, the inability to block attacks, and it has the shortest range among all weapons in the game. But don't worry, like I always say, there are ways to break one's weaknesses, and that is with a proper build and setup. But before I show you the build, I would like to give a few tips in using dual blades. Honestly, there's no secret to using this weapon effectively. The only advice I can give is, never spam attacks and combos. A good dual blade user knows when to activate, and deactivate demon mode. He also knows when to perform his combos, and how to position him or herself against a monster's most dangerous attacks. Do remember that all we have is a dual blade user is the ability to dodge every attack. We don't have the luxury to block, that is why we should be vigilant always with our surroundings, and as well as pay attention to all monster movements. So here are a few tips for your lads. The moment you enter a fight, activate demon mode to fill this bar over here. If this bar is full, that's the indicates that you can enter arch demon mode, once you deactivate demon mode. Why this is important you asked, because most of the normal combo is slower compared to what demon and arch demon mode offers. When the bar is red, and you enter arch demon mode, you can perform the demon flurry rush which dish out multiple hits and forward mobility, which allows you to deal damage and position yourself at the same time. Take note that each attack will drain the arch demon mode bar, and when it's close to running out, that's the time you enter demon mode again. Do the same cycle until a monster is down or, you can add a variety of combos if you have the perfect position to perform them. One notable combo is Blade Dance, which can only be performed during Demon Mode. I advise you not to spam this combo, and only use it when a monster is down, or you are in a spot that would take a monster time to reach you. Say, for example, the monster is focusing on your fellow hunters. You can use Blade Dance if you are in the rear, or at the side of a large monster. Another great attack is the combination of Demon Flurry Rush, followed by two round slash, and then ending it with a claw attack. Aside from the multiple hits, this combo will allow you to clutch on a monster's leg, head or tail. And once you're clutch on a monster's body part, you can push the attack button to tenderize the part. The tenderize part will be susceptible to damage, and can break easily. It usually takes two hits on the same spot to tenderize a monster part. That is not a problem for dual blade users since the attack after a clutch usually deal with multiple hits. On the other hand, you can either perform the tenderize move on the head, or do a flinch shot. I highly suggest you refer to the clutch claw quest if you haven't done it yet, so you can have a full grasp on the mechanics of this hunter tool. Besides, your slinger is a pretty handy tool, and can be added to some of your move sets. Aiming your slinger while you are in demon mode provides great positioning and mobility. For more effectiveness, I highly suggest that you go to the options menu, then camera tab, and set slinger settings to don't lock on. This will give you more control over your slinger aim. Another move that you must learn to master is the evade shot. This can only be performed after blade dance or demon flurry. Evade shot is the perfect counter for Diablo's ground attack. While it's a great final move when a monster is getting up after being knocked down, it's a great way to disorient a monster if you have flash bod equipped on your slinger. The last. Most important moves that every dual blade users should know are sliding slash and wall climbing. Sliding slash can be performed by pressing the right click button on any slope, 
Just a small slope can trigger this maneuver but take note that this can only be performed when your weapon is drawn. While wall climbing can be performed by rushing on a wall while the weapon is sheathed or, it can effectively be utilized by activating demon mode, and pressing right click against the wall. By the way, another notable maneuver is the aerial attack by pressing the space bar and right click on a ledge. So why bother learning these maneuvers you asked? Well. This is the selling point of being a dual blade user. Probably the best feature in dual blade is its ability to do aerial maneuvers like the spinning blade dance, and the most awesome of all, the heavenly blade dance. It's very satisfying to do an impressive flurry of slashes that carves a path down the full length of a monster. And the damage output is pretty lethal. Fancy and deadly in one move. Who would not want to learn such a trick? Now that you got some basic knowledge on how to use dual blades, let us proceed to my endgame build. Take note that this is not the only dual blade build I will be featuring on this channel. I got loads of builds in store for you guys, ranging from a critical element build, to blast focus, or even a strong and balanced DPS and tank build for dual blades. Also, more monster hunter builds and farming guides will be live soon. So, if you are not yet a subscriber, then this is the best time to join the grind squad. For the meantime, Let's focus on this Solar Master Ankh oriented build. This build is well balanced between DPS and survivability. For this setup, you will need 3 pieces for Zenogar Essence, and 3 pieces for the Dragon Vein Awakening. Namely, you should try to acquire the Stygian Helm Beta, Stygian Coil Beta, and the Beta version of Safi Jeeva Crested Chest Van Braces and Boots. For the weapon, you should try out Safi's Shatter Claws. Any Safi Claw would do. But since this is not a pure elemental build, I decided to go with Shatter Claws. Also, Blast is a pretty interesting status in this game as when you deal Blast status, you deal raw damage, and also build up the Blast Blight Gauge. When maxed, you will inflict the Blast status that deals a ton of damage all at once to an unbroken part in the surrounding hitboxes. Blast, since it originates at an unbroken part, is excellent for breaking hard to reach places. It seems that the part chosen is random though, since the explosion is somewhat large, it can also hit other parts at the same time. Even though the blast damage will not increase the damage you do in the short term, but the buildup of that gauge gets drastically sped up, and when it triggers, that blast damage will get a bonus from the plus 10 bonus as well. What this translates to is more frequent explosions centered in unbroken body parts, and higher damage from those explosions when they happen. Which means, this is perfect for fast hitting weapons like dual blades, since we can build up that blast blight fast, and can somehow help us deal damage on those unbroken parts of the monsters, for its awakening abilities. I picked 3 attack increase, 1 sharpness increase, and the Zenogar Essence to get the full effect of latent power 7. Now since this is not a master touch build, I did add sharpness on the awakened abilities, so it pairs with my handicraft charm 4 and give me that sweet white colored sharpness I need for this build. I wasn't sure if I'm going to increase sharpness in the past, but with some research, I found out that sharpness does matter. I thought at first that its only purpose is to void weapon hit deflection but, it turns out that it gives both elemental and raw damage boost to your weapons. I did plan to go purple but was hesitating because of the material cost to re-roll the awakened abilities. Not to mention that I surely won't able to maintain purple sharpness because I'm using dual blades with no master touch or protective polish. The white sharpness is perfect for me and I don't usually have trouble in sharpening since I'm using wet fish fin plus. This is a very useful item that every hunter should have. It sharpens your weapon in just one cycle, and it can be reused a couple of times. Honestly, I find master touch builds not that interesting anymore because of this item, and because it hinders you from mean maxing your build. For the augmentation, I have an attack increase 1, and health regen 1. I was using an attack increase 2 and status effect 1 in the past but, I switched to this setup for more survivability. Health regen 1 somehow counters the health drain per hit of the dragon vein awakening, and it's very useful especially in solo hunting in master ranks. For the set decorations, I have these jewels for my pieces of equipment. Normally players will go with resentment for Safi Jeeva builds, since it activates constantly. But I prefer the Agitator skill, since it has a 10% affinity increase. This setup will allow you to gain 100% affinity, if Latent Power 7 and Agitator 5 will proc. And in most cases, 
they usually activate every time in a hunt. Now take note that it's not a must to follow my dual allocation. All you need to do is be sure to have an attack boost 7, latent power 7, handicraft 5, agitator 5, health boost 3, critical boost 3, and the rest are personal preference. One thing that I love about this setup is because it has the blight resistance skill. It's perfect against monsters like Terstra, Lunastra, or even the recent devil, the raging Brachidios. No blight means there's no way they can kill you in an instance. Now here are some extra tips for dual blade users. Number one is to stop using the chef's choice platter, and make sure you have the feline black belt on your food skills. To have this skill, you must include four vigor ingredients on your recipe. The rest is purely up to you. Also, the demon drug is a must in your setup. It gives you more damage and it lasts for the whole period of the hunt, or when you get carted. Dash juice is also a good item for dual blade users, especially for this setup since it pairs well with a feline black belt and the reduced stamina depletion from a latent power 7. Demon powder and the rest of the noteworthy items are up to you. These items may give a small boost, but it does make a difference, especially when you are hunting monsters at master rank difficulty. So this is the first of many monster hunter guides. I thank you all for waiting and, I also thank all those people who have helped me in this game. I'm truly proud of what I have done here. After months of grinding, I finally have my desired set and, I can't thank enough those guys who have helped me achieve this. Thank you once again and for my fellow hunters, I suggest that you try this setup. Some may find latent power weak, but at level 7, it's very impressive. 60% affinity increase means that you don't need weakness exploit on your setup and you don't need to be worried about hitting a specific monster part over and over again. Also, 50% stamina depletion is very helpful. This means that you can stay in demon mode for a very long duration, providing your character with more mobility and damage output. And of course, the Dragon Vein Awakening from Safi Jeeva set. It perfectly pairs with Xenogar Essence, as it lets you activate latent power easily. Not to mention that this skill will be up for the whole period of the hunt, since you will constantly hit the monster. Not to mention that Dragon Vein Awakening does give you 20% affinity bonus, 80 element, and 60 status when your weapon is drawn. It's a perfect mix of survivability and DPS and, it's a very fun and reliable setup especially for hunters who are learning how to solo hunt every monster in the game. I hope you enjoy and find the video informative. If you do, please do give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future. Evolution.